as long as you uh, share their royalties. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you just have to take a little bit care in what you say, maybe, <laughs> or not. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> maybe the risque stories would be. <laughs> Those are the best. <laughs> Hi, Ben. Benjamin. Hi, Benjamin. Hello, Hi, Alan. Ben. <laughs> assembling here the quick question for all of you guys um we've been using uh the downtime now that classes are over to do uh some inventory i've been getting a bunch of donated telescopes um that need some tlc do you guys know a good place for you know miscellaneous telescope parts where to find them you're in southern california so i'm not i'm not sure I was thinking more like online, if you guys know any good like online mark. And like, uh, I was just looking at one thing, I need um, a counterweight shaft for an Orion Skyview Pro. So like weird stuff like that. Oh, I love the Christmas hat. That looks great. <laughs> Anza's here. Hey. That's fantastic. Really neat. And I got the whoopee cushion. This is from Garth. Garth wears these all the time oh, this, this season. So I, I wanted to get <laughs> like for a month to either side. <laughs> it's a nice warm hat, too, oh, actually. Yeah. It's great. Cushion. All That's right. Fantastic. Well, Glad I'm not too late. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to read I that. Really? Yeah. Uh, bunch of uh, Heather, have, have you um, tried uh, asking local astronomy clubs? Um, that's um, something that I, I plan on doing. We just really started doing this uh, inventorying today. So haven't gotten that far, but I'll definitely reach out to uh, local astronomy clubs. We're going to start a program called Adopt a Telescope, where we take these donated scopes and uh, get the parts needed and uh, network with uh, local astronomy club members to hook them up with students that want to do astronomy to show them how to fix up these older scopes and then they get to keep them. Oh, cool. Um, San Jose Astronomical Association does that kind of thing. So you might reach out to them and see what they know. Who, who is that? San Jose Astronomical. SJAA.net. Thanks. Yeah, they uh, they actually have their members get together periodically to do telescope repair. It's one of their activities. So I missed out. What was the problem you're having? Finding telescope parts for old donated scopes. Uh huh. There, there you're supposed to print them. James. Jim. Good point. <laughs> Not counterweight. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Hey, Jim. <laughs> hey, Jim. A bunch of us hat. didn't get All the right. memo about the hat. <laughs> yeah, I got you know, the memo. Okay, well, we were we were just uh, the about telescope parts. Um, I just there's a there's a photography there's a, for online stuff. I th I'm not sure it might be worth looking at B and H audio or video photography store online they do telescope things okay um, but i don't know about parts uh, they might though telescope and accessories it's called b and h photo i think oh, yeah. i ordered yeah. from them before yeah. yeah i'll check them out thank you so what what, what kind of telescope is it what was the make I, i've actually been Not saving sure. up some donated scopes for several years uh -huh. yeah uh, to harder harder launch this program <laughs> <laughs> I've got enough now that I can launch this program. Um, but so I've got um, most of the telescopes range between 20 to 40 years old. Um, so nice. I nice. need some hard to find parts. That's not so old. <laughs> <laughs> do, you have, do you have a Unitron in there? I do. I do. Ooh, really? You have an Arthur yeah. Clarke in there? <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> I do have a Unitron. Really? Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Those are great. Oh, you could open up a telescope museum. There we go. <laughs> there should be such a thing. 
Yeah, that's what I always wanted was a Unitron. I had an old Swift. It was it was oh, good. Yeah, I I then I built my own after that. But out of there's Edmund parts, Edmund Scientific. Remember, they had they had a lot of uh, colorful <clears throat> pieces. Make your own. That's why I was wondering what uh, the make was of the of the telescope. <laughs> so the one that I was working on right before I came in here is uh, it's a um, Mead one o two ed refractor four inch. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh yeah. Arch yeah. refractor, not so bad. Yeah. yeah, and it's set up for astrophotography, but it's missing the counterweight shaft, the counterweights, the for mounting sure. rings, <clears throat> and it's uh, uh, the the leg spreader for the tripod. So it's missing a whole bunch of parts. So a suggestion on counterweights mm -hmm. uh, is uh, to use gym weights. Oh yeah. Yeah, the you know they make weights which fit onto a bar, so you can mm -hmm. change the the weight of the dumbbell. And I've got in my collection of counterweights, gym weights that pe other people have gathered over the years to use with their telescopes. Huh, I hadn't thought about that. That's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, so, you know, if, uh, depending on the size of the shaft, uh, but, you know, if you think about it, a lot of those shaft sizes are not too dissimilar to the bar that you would grip in your hand. Mm -hmm. And then the weights they put on those bars fit nicely you might have to make a little you know adjuster for the mm -hmm. center but some old gym weights might work very nicely as counterweights great idea i gotta find that counterweight shaft first though <laughs> there you go might have to get one of those made and I, yeah. water pipe Try, check a uh, water pipe see if it's a pipe thread could be a, a standard pipe thread that's a good idea no. yeah just uh take it to the hardware store see if stuff sure, fits. Or or find something that does fit it and then see if we can match or, or see, contact the local little. local high school that has a shop, a shop yeah. class and say, yeah. hey, maybe yeah. you can help me out here and uh, make a rod and put a thread on it yeah. for me. Easy that's project a, for, a, for a shop class. That's one of the nice things about being a community college. We've actually got a big uh, welding class. Oh, awesome. Welding shop oh, yeah. here. So I, I already know a couple of them are gonna need the, the legs welded back on. and. We got that figured out. It's um, we've also got a maker space. So uh, oh, perfect. I've made arrangements with the maker space. We're going to take the the four best telescopes that we have right now, um, and store them at the maker space. And the idea is that the students, um, whenever they go to the maker space to work on the telescopes, they log the amount of time. And at the end of the semester, um, whoever logged the most time gets first pick of which telescope. Very nice. Yeah, I, I have an old um, tripod, which has a plastic part, which of course I can't get anymore. So my goal is to 3D print that part. That's my January project. I hope you publish the, the blueprints for that because I bet other people will find that useful. I could do that. I think you got, you've got you run into a bunch of scroungers here from way back. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty as charged. Oh, yeah. Part of the territory. <laughs> yeah, get now. Now you can ask us about old special effects projectors. I was going to say I probably have the largest collection of those because uh, I took two truckloads away from the old Morrison. <laughs> That's right. I remember that. I had quite speaking, a few from there. Speaking of which, Bing, is the Galileo hoist around anywhere? Oh no, I don't think so. I'd love to see it to duplicate it. <laughs> Um, we had not used that for decades. I, I don't know if it survived at all, but that was, um, basically a, a, a mechanism, uh, that, that lifted up a, a couple of balls of different weights and, uh, they were on clamps and then they were released, uh, at the right cue and they fell straight down from the top of the dome down onto a couple of catcher's mitts that were, uh, on the platform. Uh, and of course the two balls were of different masses so we could demonstrate that they actually fall at the same rate. But you know, since the time that I started there in 1973, I had not seen it in operation, but uh, it, it was legendary. <laughs> the legendary, I never saw it and I heard of it too, right? <laughs> you never saw it either though, huh? Um, I think I saw the parts for it behind the You never the actually dome. saw it do its thing. I never saw it in operation, no. 
Maybe it didn't work. Galileo was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I have video of a feather and a hammer on the moon. All right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this is my last. Mm -hmm. This is for the book. Everything Wouldn't you have been curious just once and tried it in all those years? <laughs> uh, it, no, no scripts ever called for it uh, again. Um, but I think the last Saturday night when the plans arms closed and you're all by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it would take a, a bit of effort to get that set up. Oh. It would have to go up onto the top of the dome and wired up and everything's up now. Love to have seen it though. I think I would have tried it at some point in 40 years. <laughs> if, I, I, I bet you if, if the mechanism was still there, we would have tried it, but I, I think they had removed it. I think so. Oh, yeah, I was, I was Glenn, drinking. what are you drinking? Oh, yes. I'm yeah. drinking a California red. Oh. Thorn. Mine's yeah. Australia. Oh. From the Prisoner, Prisoner <laughs> Wine Company. Is this, supposed to be a, is this supposed to be a happy hour? Oh, I'll be right back. Hey, listen, I'm not okay, okay. specific well, meeting when you're supposed to drink wine. I saw Alan with a glass of wine. So I had to get up and go get a new bottle. <laughs> this my last one. I did say that we might toast uh, various things. Uh, we could think of- I'm always ready for a toast. I just want to be prepared. It's the middle of the afternoon for you guys. It's supper time for me. All right, well, you should be ready. Well, that's still happy hour. I'm here. Still happy hour, yeah. I'm not in the Pacific area, I'm in Germany, but uh, I thought I'd hang out and see what you guys are up to. Oh, wow, it is. Okay, that's beyond happy hour. <laughs> California it's, it's, it's extra happy hour now we call it happy friday it's hilarious hour we're on astronomers time for sure <laughs> yeah, so sky scan sort of based in germany now ah mm -hmm. really yeah it was well, sort of just ended up with the company default wise <laughs> Isn't there that there's that new company? See, yeah, uh, yeah. Ned and George. It's a couple of ex employees from Skyscan. They've, uh, I think they're going to pop in later too. It sounds good. There was two other meetings earlier today, so I've just been doing meetings all day. Okay, yes, yeah, so it must be the middle of the night for you then, huh? Yeah, uh, 11 20. 11 20. Oh, that's not, that's not horrible then. Last night there was a Dome Dialogues friendly meeting and it was two o'clock in the morning for me. <laughs> it was worth staying up for. There was, I think, 30, 40 people there. So. Well, I only had a three hour correction to make, but I made it in the wrong direction. So I signed, tried to sign in at 11 o'clock this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Someday I've got to figure that all out. <laughs> I have posted a question about Jean Henry, for those of you who know her on the chat. So if you can have an answer for that, boy, I'd be glad to know. Yeah. This is the most wine I've seen in a Zoom meeting ever. That's pretty cool. <laughs> well, we know how to do that. Out, out I have to come to these class. specific meetings more often. <laughs> <laughs> hey, in more normal meetings, you have to do it in a coffee mug. Well, this is distinctly not a business meeting of any sort. So it's a, yeah. it's a tell, tell tall tales um, and other things. <laughs> Well, wine is a very sophisticated drink, though. It belongs in, in our field. <laughs> well, my wife and I have been taking um, some mixology classes. Oh, really? Le learning how to make cocktails. Huh? And <laughs> so from this guy who is a, who is a bartender. That he says, he kind of, <laughs> I feel, uh, um, I still drink wine. I, I like to drink wine. But he says he's trying to get he's trying to get us away from drinking wine. <laughs> uh, wine's much more healthy. 
Yeah. I like it all. The other way around. So, Ellen, what's your favorite uh, drink uh, you've been mixing so far? Well, there was one. There was one that was called the, the Harvest Martini. Harvest Martini, I think it was, and it had like a pumpkin sort of a squat. Uh, well, it was a pumpkin. Uh, not a distilled pumpkin. It was a redu a pumpkin reduction, concentrated pumpkin uh, liquor, and and you added that to whiskey, or no? What what's in a martini? Gin. Um, I get yeah, gin, gin, and, yeah. gin and vermouth. Yeah. Although he says that you know you can really go anywhere you want with combinations of things, you know, as long as you keep the proportions right. You know, you can use whiskey or gin or vodka or anything like that as a base and then <laughs> add the other things in the right proportion and it comes out good. Hmm. I guess the uh, practice is what's fun. The drinking. <laughs> <laughs> the tasting. Emptying the glass so you can try the next idea. Yeah, mood, exactly. mood enhancements, yes. Andy, where are you? Where are you located? I like your background. Um, that background was a picture I took almost exactly a year ago. I think it was on, on or near the solstice um, sunset from um, Seabright Beach, um, Santa Cruz, right by the harbor. Oh, nice. I walked down there um, quite a bit. It's two miles from my front door to the water. Wow. So it's a nice weather you've got right now. Oh man, it's beautiful. Yeah, I was down in Monterey. I just got back actually. Oh nice. Okay, I have cold a, in Santa Monica. I have a uh, an idea for a audience or an activity here for all of us, audience <laughs> participation. But it's only with the uh, it's only with um, Norm's permission. Norm, you said you had something that you could share with us that was like about five minutes. Yes. But, but would you uh, be open to kibitzing and comments uh, during your presentation? Um, yes, that's fine. <laughs> Reluctantly. He <laughs> seems skeptical, yeah. Uh, like, oh, what am I getting myself into here now? Well, it... Um, uh, it certainly will lengthen the uh, the pacing, uh, but yeah, it could be done that way. Well, may or may not happen. I need to. If you need to share something, I need to give you permission. I yeah, think. Yeah, I need to share the screen. I think it's I think it's except that's not showing right now. Hold on a minute. But make him a co-host. I'm going to make you co-host. Well. So you what have permission. You have permission now, so <laughs> so I better not find the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was up just a moment ago. Um, um, there, that's the one I want. Yeah, except it's still not up. No. Hmm. That's a good idea. But yeah, but I'd like to help out. There's an awful lot. Now that I've uh, and everything, I feel a lot why did that not come up? Well, that's okay. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, we see it in uh, presenter what mode. Did, what do you now see? We see selfies across space. You see selfies across space? But we see okay, it as, as your lap, as your desktop. Uh, Need to press play or something. Yeah. Slide, slide oh, yeah. from beginning. Slide show, yeah. Um, go down. Go down, okay. Down, or see, file, slide. edit, view, oh, slide file, down. edit, view, right. slide. Up um, by share, it says slideshow. Yeah, up uh, uh, near the top right, slideshow. Nice to that yellow thing down. on the right. Not quite. Yeah. Oh, oh, there. Down, okay. Oh, no, no, not share. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, no. Get Don't out of that. that. How do you get out of that? <laughs> yeah, good luck. Click, <laughs> click, any, click anywhere. Now, right next <laughs> to share is this thing that says slideshow. 
Well, I show. Got a, and there's got a menu. Uh, yeah, drop down. That's pretty okay. much Presenter, start from the beginning. Yeah. Start from the beginning. Go to the end and then stop. Well, that worked. <laughs> okay, we're ready. Go full All screen right. also. Okay. Yeah, full screen. Uh, except, well, okay, there you go. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. As a lot of you know, I live in an RV. And one of the good things about an RV is that it moves when you make it, make it do that. Uh, so I've been taking an astronomer's road trip. Uh, I uh, drove to Mercury, <laughs> Nevada, and I continued on to Venus, Florida. I dropped in briefly on Earth, <laughs> very briefly. It's not like I live there or anything. <laughs> This one's in Texas. It's windy on Earth. Norm, was uh, it windy on Earth? Uh, yeah, yeah, we shoot the breeze a lot, yes. Uh, I, I saw an aurora in uh, Illinois. Mm -hmm. I saw hmm. the moon in Pennsylvania. Mars is also in Pennsylvania, not far from the moon. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that, explain, that explains yes, a lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, I visited number one series, whether it's an asteroid, it's still number one in my book. Yeah, so I, uh, I also visited asteroid number eight, Florida, mm -hmm. a flora rather. So there's a lot. Um, and uh, I went on to Jupiter. That's also in Florida, right next to some uh, uh, spring training baseball uh, diamonds. Uh, I looked up Uranus in Missouri. Uh, I saw a rising sun in Indiana, not far from Cincinnati. Uh, the sun and the sun's center. There's one in Florida and one in Arizona. I went to both of them. I intuited a message from from uh, Spock and uh, yeah uh, uh, and uh, went to uh, Alberta where you can find all of this stuff in Vulcan, Alberta. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, I uh, enjoyed a rising star. Uh, the stars at night are big and bright deep in the heart of Texas. I, I saw another star in the middle of uh, North Carolina. You went to the Libra Y. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Libra Y. Uh, Castor, as you may remember, is a sextuple star, and all of them were eager beavers uh, in Alberta. Um, mm. The summer triangle is partly uh, uh, apparent. Uh, Vega, the bright corner of the summer triangle, is in uh, Texas. Maybe that's where vegans come from. <laughs> Texas, I'm not sure. The, uh, <laughs> the south yeah. corner of the summer triangle is also in Texas, but I never found Deneb. There's probably a tale about that. Mm. Oh. Um, um. oh, good. Uh, I tried Googling it. I, 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 I found most of these on Wikipedia. Uh, I looked north from South Carolina and I saw the North Star yeah. in Ohio. Oakley. Huh. Huh. I found M57, the <laughs> ring, but it wasn't in Lyra. It's in Wisconsin. <laughs> Where? Ring, Wisconsin, south of Oshkosh. Oh. Uh, uh, Ohio had a, a lot of nice ideas. Uh, this one is a Nova, uh, which uh, uh, produced a lot of heavy elements, which spread out. Uh, there's carbon. I found this carbon in Texas. And I found this iron in Missouri, though there's iron in several other states also, also carbon in other states. Some gold landed in uh, 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 northern Pennsylvania. <laughs> Genesee, Pennsylvania. Uh, I, I visited my favorite uh, constellation and discovered after I had crossed the country several times to follow these things, there's one of them right next to where I live, uh, Hercules. 
Hercules is in uh, Northern California. Uh, and I pass it many times and just didn't occur to me that's a constellation. So I went back and took a, a good picture of it when the leaves were uh, changing. Uh, I saw the whole cosmos in Minnesota. That's a neat town. Most of the streets have astronomical names. Um, there's a gas in uh, Indiana. <clears throat> I never found a solid state. Uh, <clears throat> in addition to the uh, astronomical journey, I was on my personal journey and found that uh, in Missouri, they had made a dunce cap for me with uh, characterization on it already. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of things I was uncertain about and uh, Texas and Louisiana have been uncertain about their boundary and named a town for that uncertainty. <laughs> So I surrendered to my fate in Texas. I followed what almost everybody tells me to do. I went to hell, uh, hell, Michigan. <laughs> where they welcomed me as one of their own. <laughs> so that's my astronomical road trip. Yeah. Very nice. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to take away your sharing. <laughs> you're, you're still Alan, expecting. Alan, all this power has gone to your head. <laughs> well, that was, was just in case uh, Norm. From Union City, where there's a Kohutek Way. Ah, I, I decided not to do streets. I was trying to do towns. Uh, and there are still two that I haven't been to. Uh, Pluto, West Virginia and Neptune, New Jersey. And there are Pluto in Florida also? I was not able to find a Pluto in Florida. Okay. There, there's one in uh, Mississippi, but I couldn't find any town name, any sign there that said it. Well, like it's appropriate. It's appropriate you haven't made it to Neptune or Pluto since they're so far away. <laughs> well, I have the RV. I can drive places. Where are you right now? I'm in Pacheco near Concord, California. And uh, over what time period did you do all this traveling? Is this over many, many years? Um, the oldest picture there is series in 2012. I started uh, driving around in 2013 uh, and stopped when the uh, uh, plague told me to stop. Uh, so I haven't been anywhere in two years. Yeah, I was going to say that's probably <clears throat> not within the last couple of years anyway. Right. So I, I still have a lot of uh, other projects that are unfinished, and this one is nearly, un nearly finished, but not quite. Norm, can I ask you a question? Sure. Were you not at some point um, identified as the historian for the Pacific Planetarium Association? About 25 years ago, yeah. Do you have any of the uh, old records? At one time, um, I found in one of our bulletins that there was a uh, historical record that Edna DeVore was watching over at San Jose High School. But um, in one of our earlier meetings, we were asking about uh, the origin of some of the old uh, pointer magazines that went back a little closer to the beginning of the so Pacific course, Planetarium that's Association. Shocked, but, but that's the thing as far as we know, no. There's but, a, you know, that's it. There's there's a, been a, there's you know, it, 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 it is, a, it, it is uh, as you uh, know. The ones that I had in the uh, end of the 90s, um, things were getting very rocky at home. I, I saw a divorce coming uh, and uh, I, I put them in a box, labeled them PPA and brought them to my then office at Sonoma State. Uh, many years later, I talked to Steve Anderson there and he said, there's boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes, and yours might be among them. 
but they totally fill one of his uh, uh, storage rooms and he hasn't even gotten into the room for years. Uh, so it, there might be a PPA uh, carton uh, in the physics storage room at Sonoma State. Uh, it was um, very insecure if I was going to keep that around my home with a divorce pending. Well, that sounds like uh, it's quite likely that it's there at Sonoma State, because <laughs> if it's been buried in boxes, it's a time go capsule now. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like maybe we need a field trip, go do some exploring. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can't I don't hear a whole lot of volunteers happening. OK, we have a long. We have a, a conversation happening. I'm not sure who is has a background conversation, but if you have a background conversation going on, put on yourself on mute. I did. That's why I muted here. I still hear it. Okay. Well, Alan, you can mute everybody. I can, but I don't want to. Oh, well, you could, <laughs> and then people could unmute as they needed to. Yeah. Well, it, it, when it gets to be a serious problem, then I'll do that. It'd be too hard to get the Procyon voices going on. <laughs> Procyon problem. All right. <laughs> Somebody have a TV on? No, no, we're okay now. They quietly muted it. Okay. <laughs> Alan, I had uh, a lot of PPA um, magazines for quite a long time, um, two boxes of them, but I gave them, I believe, to Benjamin. Oh, no, you didn't. I didn't. You never did. <laughs> you, well, you, threatened, you threatened to give them to me. I did. <laughs> you threatened, but it never happened. Well, I'll look around and see if I still have them. You still have them. <laughs> well, the other... Um... The other source that we had is a, has, has, um, is a sad story. Um, Mike Bennett said he had all the pointers and he was going to ship them to me, but then, then he passed away. And uh, I, I, uh, yeah, we might be able to contact his widow to get them, but, um, but it's not do done that yet. Soon. Yeah. Soon but you know what? On the mentioning of Mike Bennett, I would like to have a toast. To Mike what? Bennett. He gave us. He gave me all his old uh, Planetarian magazine. They're they're still down at uh, De Anza College, I believe. So, oh, wow. after those, a lot of people have old Planetariums. So. And to Steve Craig. Mm -hmm. And to Steve Craig. Craig. Mike, Steve. We were at our last session. When did Steve pass? Um. A few weeks ago now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I missed that. I missed that news. Okay. That was about a month ago. Yeah. Ben, uh, did you uh, author the article um, that came out uh, about uh, Mike Bennett and his association with the Pacific uh, Planet, uh, the uh, ASP Astronomical Society of the Pacific? No, I did not. That was put together by um, Edna DeVore with help from. Uh, Mike's brother and his widow. Uh, there was a tremendous amount of information in that one. Excellent yeah. article. Yeah. I worked with both uh, Steve Craig and uh, Mike Bennett in my early association with the Norton Planetarium. I think I mm -hmm. started working as a high school student as an usher in uh, the early 60s and uh, knew both both of those uh, wonderful personalities and all the effort they put in to great shows and educating the public and the long lines that uh, went out the door to see some of the planetarium programs. They were all authored uh, locally by, by staff. So uh, mm -hmm. it, it's hard to take uh, when former colleagues pass like that so close together. I'm glad that, that the last uh, uh, reunion of uh, earlier PPA members uh, brought them both together with us to say hi and to listen to them. And um, they will be missed. 
Yeah, Mike told us some great stories. <laughs> we were, um, yeah, actually, this is part two of stories, probably, but uh, we, we haven't had, we haven't really dived into stories here. But uh, Mike had some pretty good ones from our uh, session back in July, I think it was. Yeah. As Absolutely. did Steve, as did Steve. Mm -hmm. So there was a, <clears throat> there's a lovely PDF I came out. Um, so I went to see Steve shortly before he passed. And he told me that um, someone at the Academy had interviewed him and had done a nice write up. And I have a PDF if anyone wants it. The sad thing, I don't know, Bing, if you have a different version, they reference a lot of uh, photographs but my version of the PDF doesn't have any of the photographs in it. Was that uh, the document called uh, Things Are Looking Up? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that was sort of an, um, an oral history that was mm -hmm. recorded by someone in archives mm -hmm. a number of years ago, and uh, it was transcribed into this bound volume, which we have. And I, I noticed that it did reference a number of photographs, which are many of which are also in archives. So uh -huh. we, we have a lot of those images. It's a good it's run. A, it's a, it's a great read. I'm only partway through mm -hmm. it. Because, yeah. you know, obviously I didn't find out about it till I visited him and he said, look into it. But, um, but yeah, it's a wonderful history. Mm -hmm. And you get a lot of Steve coming through in it too. Oh, yeah. We also uh, produced a, um, uh, a memorial video uh, that we put on the Planetarium's Facebook page that was partly, oh, based, that. partly based on some of those um, interviews. We uh -huh. found the, the, the audio of the interviews, and so we got his voice saying oh, great. Some of those same things. And a little bit was also taken from the 60th anniversary video that we did in um, whenever that was. Yeah. So uh, we got a couple of good things. That's on the Morrison's web uh, Facebook page. Yes, okay. and also on YouTube as well. I think. Okay, I'll go look yeah. for it. Yeah. We were working on something similar for Mike, but I don't know what the status of that is right now. Yeah, I forgot well, who it, there was a, the person at uh, Morrison who was putting together the. I mean, you referred me. You referred her to me, um, and I, Molly. Yeah, yeah, I did a little um, interview with her. Yeah. Uh, so that's so that'll come out, I guess, at some point. I I, I should find out where that stands right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a work in progress for a while, but other projects have come up in the meantime. But I'll 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 try to ask her about that. Just like I told you, I would try to ask Leslie about Mike's pointer yeah. collection. Yeah, well, I know you don't have very, you know, you don't have that many things to do, so <laughs> you can easily do those things. Oh yeah, Bing can do it. <laughs> so Tony is out there in um, Hawaii, I think. Tony, are you? Tony just came in. There he is. Nice to hey. see you, Gail. How's things out in Hawaii, Tony? Yeah, I heard you well, got snow. <clears throat> they did on the, yeah, the, the Big Island Summits had quite a, they had a blizzard warning uh, a couple weeks ago, and we got about five inches of rain dumped on us in two days. Wow. In, uh, in urban Honolulu. Um, and, uh, it's not unheard of, but it doesn't happen very often. Um, but yeah, no, things are going fine. We actually just had our, our 60th anniversary of our planetarium this past weekend. Um, so we did a, a couple of uh, kind of extra things some solar viewing with the University of Hawaii Institute for Astronomy came and um, we did some other uh, kind of activities we don't normally do. All December, we have three planetarium shows for everybody on weekends. For winter break coming up these next two weeks all of the shows every day will be free for everybody um and then we had a couple of uh vip events to kind of honor it as well one of them was the the watamal family whose name is on the planetarium um who gave us a nice donation in honor of the 
the um, 60th anniversary. And then uh, just last night we had one with the Polynesian Voyaging Society. And uh, Nainoa Thompson gave a, I don't know, hour long talk. Uh, it didn't feel that long, but you know, we suddenly checked the watches and it was quite a bit later than we expected. And he talked a lot about uh, the importance of uh, Will Kaselka, who was the, um, the, his main teacher in the planetarium here um, for Nainoa as he was relearning and mm -hmm. reconnecting to his Hawaiian heritage as, as voyagers on his way to becoming the first Hawaiian in 600 years to navigate to Tahiti and back without instruments. Um, so yeah, it's always really great to hear Nainoa speak and um, kind of the, the reverence that he holds for our planetarium and some stories that he told from taking uh, their, um, their other teacher, Mao Piailu, who came from Micronesia um, in there and Mao told them that the stars were wrong and refused to do anything inside of the planetarium actually. Um, and uh, it, it was kind of interesting to kind of hear about that. So he insisted on always being outside on the real sky. So that was really interesting. And then like the friendship that kind of developed between Mao and Will um, as this like cross-cultural, cross-world part of an effort to get Nainoa to where he needed to go. And it was really, I think that we'll, we'll, we'll try to get that video of the talk um, up, on, up on YouTube or something, because it's really something to listen to and really talks a lot about the value of teachers um, and having one teacher goes a long way for somebody. So yeah, it was very good. It was rejuvenating for the job, that's for sure. It sounds so. like uh, Mao Pilog is some kind of a uh, 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 purist when it comes to stars. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I mean, you know, at that, like, his his method of teaching was sitting on a um, on a woven mat with uh, corals representing chunks of coral representing different things like on the ground in front of him, and so it's it's just very very different. Um, you know, the way that he had learned. And of course he had started from when he was like five years old. So one of the very first things he told Nainoa is that, no, you're too old, which I always think of, um, you know, Yoda's rejection of training Anakin was oh, that same yes. kind of thing. Um, <laughs> well, to begin but, with training, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, oh, so yeah, yeah it, it was it was great to, to have that. And then a bunch of those other uh, Polynesian Voyaging Society folks around is always, always great. And uh, always inviting them back in to do whatever they need to in our planetarium. It's arguably we are here because of the work and the legacy that they have, that they have built. So it's a big part of our, our responsibility and our, our kuleana is the word for what we need to do. So it's cool. I still have my copy of uh, Will's book, North Star to Southern Cross. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. His other, the other one of his that we always recommend is called An Ocean in Mind. Um, which is like the book version of all of the notes that he took during Nainoa's training from the, the mid seventies through, um, I think a, a little bit beyond the 1980 voyage, but, but that one's also very, very good because Will was on the escort vessel um, that went alongside uh, Hokulea. And so he has a lot of insight from that stuff too. But yeah, North Star to Southern Cross is another very good one. Yeah. Nice. Um, Anyway, I'm making some lunch, so I'm going to turn my camera off again, but it's lovely to see everybody. I'll be around. Yeah, probably a Zeiss guy wouldn't even be good enough for Mao <laughs> Pilo. <laughs> you know, I, I learned in, in researching for our 60th anniversary that we just had that our the Spitz A3P that we had in our planetarium was the second one ever built. It was serial number 002. <laughs> I have no idea what happened to it after they took it out. It's kind of been lost. I heard I heard that it may have been shipped off to Goto, um, but unclear whether they sent it back because they'd already figured everything out by the time they got their hands on a Spitz machine. That was going to be my question. I'm looking for a A1 or A2 for my collection. You have a collection? Uh, I collect various planetarium gadgets and stuff. And we still have our original Spitz projector. Uh, I need to look at the serial number, but we're, we're coming up to our 70th, 78th anniversary of the museum. And so the planetarium was one, was one in the first five and 
uh, the nature. Mm -hmm. And um, so we saw the original spit projector, uh, but I haven't looked at the serial number. I think it was an A1. But, uh, and you don't want to get rid of it either, I guess. Say it again, Don. You don't want to get rid of it either, I guess. Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> no, no. Well, you know, it's in collection. So once it's in collection, they can't, they can't let go of it. Um, we still have the uh, the old Goto Mars One prototype. Wow, uh, I didn't know that. Uh, it's still sitting in the box, and we still have <laughs> those wonderful mercury weight on the lenses. You know, the mercury that kept the lens stable. So uh, we got a big caution label on there, and I know that. I know what's in there, but everybody else is going to leave it alone. So after that's kind of that was thing. the way to make a horizon cut off for a long time. I play with yep. the mercury when I worked yep. at those Spitz. old Spitz instruments. Used it for the equator and the and the uh, yeah, a yeah. a three a four five twelve all had uh, yep yep on ecliptic and coordinates and exactly. I have a few vials sitting around. Yeah, it was always fun to play with. Oh, I remember rolling it on our tabletops before we knew how yeah. it was dangerous to do that, right? <laughs> to do all sorts of stuff. Right. You drop one of those glass cutoffs on the floor and the mercury goes everywhere. Yeah. It yeah. might explain a lot. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> I know I did the same thing when I was a kid playing with mercury. And then my son was in middle school and somebody brought some to school and they closed school for the day and brought people in hazmat suits. And it's like, what a bunch of snowflakes, you know? It's like... <laughs> We had mercury for breakfast when we were growing up. <laughs> That's funny. We were tough back then. Huh? We were. We were the asbestos. We didn't care about that stuff. <laughs> oh, Bing, do you remember how we used to clean with uh, benzene? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can That's how we took, took gum out of the carpets with benzene. I can and take carbon tetrachloride, too. Methyl ethyl ketone was the best. Yeah. Oh, MEK, yeah, good stuff. MEK is the best stuff for mirrors and lenses. <laughs> Can't get away with that these days, huh? We get rid of all the fun stuff. <laughs> but we're allowed to have glyphosate. If, go figure. Roundup, that is. Anybody, anybody needs an old Digistar 2 bulb, well, I could ship it for free to anybody that wants it. A what? The Digistar 2 bulb. The long oh, oh, the CRT. Yeah. It's brand new, so if you want it, I'll ship it to you. That's okay. That's enough of those. It's still, still charged. should probably get rid of it before it costs too much to dispose of. Yeah. Exactly. It's full of phosphor. Does it have mercury in it? Uh, I hope not. <laughs> what? If it doesn't have mercury, I'm not interested in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's got other good um, dangerous things in it. I think some cadmium and phosphor and a couple other goodies. Well, the valuable minerals these days are for semiconductors. And what I was reading an article about uh, lithium. Oh, yeah. Uh, in uh, what country was that? Bolivia? Or that has most of the, you know, largest stock, largest uh, ores of lithium. Everybody's trying to, all the companies are going there trying to get lithium. We'll get our electric vehicles going. Also good for people with chemical disorders and depression. Take lithium. I was going to say lithium, not just for uh, mental health anymore, right? Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll take quite a bit. Lithium. Takes quite a bit more lithium to, for an electric. <laughs> <laughs> Go see where there's low amounts of depression. You probably have secret deposits of lithium under the ground. Yeah, oozing out through the, through the ground. Yeah, that's, uh, 
Good way to look for it, I guess. Worth a try. You still on your first glass, Glenn? <laughs> I'm already halfway through the bottle. Oh, then I better go catch up. Hang on. Uh oh, not catch up. Wine. <laughs> first glass. This is at least a half bottle meeting, if not a whole bottle meeting. <laughs> well, we're working on it. <laughs> hey, Alan. Thank you for hosting the session today. I wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I gotta go. Talk to you well, soon. Well, thanks for coming, Tom. It's great to Good see seeing you. you. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks. Have a nice holiday, hey, Tom. Tom. Right. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Yeah, happy holidays. All right. Take care. Thank you. I guess we have to, uh, I don't know, last time, last time we had um, storytelling and we got a lot of good stories. Benjamin, can you turn your phone off? <laughs> he must have left the room. <laughs> he left the room to get more wine and left his phone. Right, now I got to mute him. <laughs> Oh, okay. No, we had storytelling last time, a lot of good stories. And, uh, but I wonder if anybody knows of any that were not told last time that you really wanted to, wanted to tell about. Stories of the olden days, the worst, I think uh, the topics were like, what was the most embarrassing thing or the most catastrophic thing or <laughs> the most something that happened in your planetarium? I don't know if it was catastrophic, but I, I, there's a story about how um, the, the this involves Jose Mena, who went out to run the little planetarium in Kearney, Nebraska. But we had an effect which was projected, a slide was projected through a little dish of water, and it had an agitator in it to ripple the water so it would come up with a, a, a ripply effect, and then the agitator would stop, and the rippling would, would subside, and you'd see a clear image. And uh, one night, Jose did the show and turned on that effect and this big cockroach goes floating through the scene. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I, mean, I have fond memories of the Morrison back then. That was one of my earlier trips when a bunch of us scanners came out with Steve and we all were staying in some flop house somewhere, all, all sleeping in the same big room. And, uh, yeah, just going back and working all day and into the night, and just going back to this boarding house to sleep and then coming back in the day and back in the old days when it took miles of cables. And Was that installing uh, the, the automation system in 89? Uh, not 89, because I started at Skyscan in 90, but it was oh, probably okay. after one of the... One okay. of the well, the and spice automation was installed. The spice automation system was installed in June of '89, yeah. and then uh, a couple of months after that, we had the Loma Prieta quake. And you yeah. know, the planetarium came out okay, but I, I, yeah. I called up Skyscan and asked Ginger if, if if the warranty covered earthquake damage, and she said, "Why?" <laughs> she wasn't amused by that question. I don't know. I have to ask Steve. <laughs> now you already had spice when i was there but i can't remember what we okay were uh maybe that was um you know we had uh digital sky for a, what was it digital sky whatever you call the yeah, that's system. way before digital sky is way before okay that. all right we probably were adding video or something to... yeah yeah that's what i'm thinking i remember there was a, a room there with a like a patch bay of all different kinds of things where you could Hook in yeah. switch, really complicated, like an old uh, telephone switchboard. Thing. That is exactly that was, that what was it was. Yeah, it was yeah. a USEC system. Did you have a USEC system? We did. Yeah, that was a patchable special effects system. We had a high voltage bus running around the theater with these big. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. our, um, get that tour. I remember going back. Call those uh, since remember. Jones connectors and yeah, there was I don't know, like half dozen dimmable buses and a couple fixed power buses and right special effects were wired up and then you patch them up which mm -hmm. control the mm -hmm. lamp and the water speed that was a pretty cool thing but it was quite labor intensive to install yeah 
Yeah, before that, this we had that, this system. This that. Yeah. Before that, we had the system that Carl was talking about, which which used literally, um, you know, telephone connectors and oh, wires right. and okay. yeah. Then we switched to the Skyscan system, and uh, that that worked really well for us through through the end in, in two thousand three. That's what the uh, Strassenburg Planetarium had that patchwork system uh, with the gray, what uh, HR gray system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before they went to sky with Skyscan, so I interned there, and that was yeah, you know, it was like working in a telephone factory where you had a you know these old switchboards where you had to switch back back and forth for special effects, and it was crazy. It was just a nightmare, but a lot of fun. Yeah, I remember there were a lot of. Uh, I think everybody had a lot of late night repair sessions or preparation sessions because you couldn't do it during the day. I remember one time our planetarium went down and we called John Hare to come out and help us fix the go. It was a go to Mercury. Uh, and it was late at night. He wanted to have it when we were done, he wanted to have a beer. He said, what places are open now? <laughs> he was a beer person. Yeah, we had to do most of our work at night because um, you couldn't program offline back then. I mean, everything had to be done in the theater because you had to see where everything was and check it out. I mean, you could, if you were really, really good, you could do some spice programming on a spare computer, like get your cues and stuff in and then come into the theater and tweak everything. But uh, yeah. We still say we'll work out outside of work theater hours if you need us to, but nobody ever needs us to do that much anymore these days. I can't remember the last time I had to work in a planetarium at three o'clock in the morning. I'll pass on a story from well before my time at Bishop Museum, but as I was talking to Ken Miller about some highlights of his time at the museum when he was um, in charge of the planetarium there in the 80s. <clears throat> he told me that they were installing a scissor lift um, for the uh, A3P and they had lifted the whole thing off of the center um, box, wooden box thing it was mounted on. And then they casually kind of leaned against the side of it and they heard a very loud crack um, and then kind of gave a, a stronger push on the sidewall that had been holding up the whole projector thing and the whole thing just went over and was just eaten out by termites um just completely and they sort of had the realization that like oh at any point some somebody some rambunctious fourth grader could have brought down the entire universe at will oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah in the middle of a show yeah. uh-huh we check it a little bit more often for uh any kind of bug stuff now yeah <laughs> Alan, are there some people trying to get into the meeting? Are there people trying to get in? No, not that I see. What makes you think that? Because uh, uh, somebody's texted me saying I'm waiting for the host to start. Must have the wrong link. Waiting for the host to start. Oh, <laughs> well, it started. Uh, <laughs> An hour ago. Yeah, I've been watching the waiting room. I was telling people who the first people who came that I'm I've tried to make this uh, I check the security settings on this and make it so that there was no waiting room because you either have to have a waiting room or you have to have a password or both. And when we got Zoom bombed one time, I put both on. But now I don't think we need a waiting room, but I can't I can't get it. I can't get it undone on, on the settings. So. Hmm have to get but no i've been watching the waiting room there's nobody all right maybe he has a wrong link or something could be benjamin was back for a while and he's still uh silenced well Snacks. i think he's got other stuff going on oh, okay <laughs> on his way to go get more wine yeah uh, I, I i saw his jaw moving 
<laughs> like he was talking to somebody. <laughs> he was drawing. <laughs> one of the things you talked about that happened during the night that's wonderful for me is that the, um, you guys remember the L Cross mission? Where yeah. The um, probe that was going to hit the crater in the south region of the moon and what have you, and it was, uh, broadcast in the middle of the night and what have you. But we were doing an event here at the museum. And, you know, I really wasn't thinking that we're going to get a big turnout because um, we we're going to show it on NASA TV and everything. Um, but during the whole day, um, there was a radio station in Portland that was really drumming up the talk that. It, the, the mission where we're really sending a rocket or a bomb to hit the moon, that's a bomb. <laughs> and so bomb the moon. They were really drumming it up. And so <laughs> before we were gonna open up, there was a massive crowd outside uh, of our gallery uh, in the uh, at Amzi. And as soon as we opened the door, we filled up to capacity in both rooms. And then we had to close the door. We and lo and behold, I didn't have security, okay? And so uh, we just had to close the door. And then the people that were here were wearing a hazmat suit and putting up signs. And <laughs> then um, at one point, one of the vendors was delivering something to the museum that early morning. They, he, it was literally blocking the traffic. So he was trying to drive through the crowd and the crowd started um, rocking the, the van. Okay? They're trying to turn it over. Okay? And so the driver ran out out of the van and because he was rocking the van around. And, um, and then people inside of the, of the auditorium started coming out of the hazmat. Um, do not bomb the moon. Don't <laughs> not bomb the moon. And they were telling, holding up signs and what have you. And the darn thing is that the news crew were here. It went um, viral. It went everywhere. <laughs> it wasn't about the mission. It was about the protests. It was everywhere. <laughs> and um, so I finally got, managed to get through it all. We, we, of course, they were very disappointed with the result, with the not seeing anything. And they, they <laughs> And I said, look, you go outside, there's the moon, it's still there. You didn't <laughs> okay. And you couldn't see the little blip and what have you. And they were really disappointed with that. And it's like, <laughs> I, I told you. And so that's the biggest memory I have in the middle of the night thing. And I tell you that I, I usually don't have beer in the morning, but I had definitely had beer in the morning. When I, <laughs> never tasted good. <laughs> that's a, I think that's a whole category of stories that would be uh, under the category would be trying to fix what the media has done. <laughs> that's why I love bad, bad astronomy by um, what's his name, the author Phil Plate. Yeah, yeah, Phil Plate. I love that book, and that definitely fits in in the category right there. <laughs> well, we had somebody just came in. Who is? Who? Hi, it's yeah. George. George. Yeah. Hello. I'm going to put your name in there rather than uh, SSI. What, 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 remind me your last name? Barnett. Barnett. Yeah. That's our buddies in the States. See, I was telling you about earlier. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Hello, George. Lots of people I know here. That's, that's interesting. Mostly old timers. Mostly yes, old timers. Uh, yeah, I'm one of yeah, them. You're, you don't have a, you don't have long hair or beard yet, so you need a little more time. Well, just give me time. It'll happen. It's winter now. <laughs> if you have to grow a beard, George, it would be fitting. No, I don't like the titchy. Where are you calling in from? I am ah. in Nashua, New Hampshire. Ah, okay. So it's night. It's uh, dark there now. It gets dark here about four thirty now this time of year. So yeah, yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember that there was an Onion article one time that had the headline: uh, "The entire East Coast plunged into darkness." Uh, <laughs> the sun went down. 
<laughs> yeah, early in the day. Well, anyways, good to see you all. Um, you all enjoying your Friday? I guess some of you, it's not too late yet right now, but um, uh, for, for some of us, we're going to have a beer. Yeah, we're, uh... actually, actually, the drink of today is red wine, I think. Well, for some of us. <laughs> cheers. 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 Oh, there's some beer toast. drinkers. What are you drinking, Alan? Uh, this is a uh, Trefethen, uh, uh um franc uh it's a what you might call it franc cabernet franc Ca uh Ca cabernet franc um From california which is you yeah trefethen is in napa valley I, I was up there last weekend uh uh doing a little wine tasting uh in the rain we go up there every winter at, at around this time uh, Somebody built a planetarium in St. Helena. I'd move there and work for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, we were there. Um, we were we were there uh, doing a little shopping at some stores and wine tasting. Although yeah, was it Orn, pronounce it Orn Swift? Helena. What was that? Did you pronounce Orn? it St. Helena, not Helena? St. Helena. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. We have to, okay, now yeah. we have another category thing: pronunciation of names. Yeah. How do you pronounce the city of Pueblo? <laughs> Pueblo. I've been to For Sales, Kentucky before. For Sales. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they say it there. Yeah. No. What are some other examples of that? Well, I've heard some people talking about the media pronounce Omicron, the Omicron variant. But I always thought it was Omicron. And I asked my brother, who was a Greek scholar, and he said Omicron. So I'm sticking with him. Some say Omicron. Yeah. They put it I've heard there. Omicron. Right. <laughs> a number of years ago, there was a discussion about uh, Io, Jupiter's moon. Now, some people pronounce it Io. Some pronounce it Eo. To be correct, Greek. Yeah. A local TV newsman pronounced it ten. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! What a clever. Well, no, and uh, don't get us started on Uranus. <laughs> well, you've already heard from that to this evening as we looked up. <laughs> oh yeah, from uh, uh, Norm's. Norm to the show. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty good. I was kind of saw the real one through a telescope one. last Saturday night. You saw what in the telescope? I saw the real the real uh, Uranus through a telescope last Saturday night. Oh. Hmm. Wow! You no, know, I got a um, a message from Alex Filipenko just a little while ago saying that the comet. Comet is visible in the evening now. What what comet? Uh, Leonard. That's oh, gorgeous. I, I haven't Leonard, seen. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen it live, but uh, Dave Eicher from Astronomy Magazine has been posting almost daily gorgeous pictures of it. Yeah, well, he said that it switched over from the morning sky to the evening sky, and it's visible tonight. I guess. Uh, What's the magnitude supposed to be? Does anybody know the? Well, predicted he said he said it's. If you're lucky, it's naked eye, so that would, you know, yeah. You know. wow. But binoculars, of course. I uh, heard third or fourth. Third or fourth, wow. Yeah. Pictures I read someplace that it's, I read someplace that it's getting fainter unexpectedly. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Just yeah, a few I, days ago, it was right next to M22, which uh, makes for some great photos that have been, um, uh, posted on spaceweather.com. Mm. I think getting fainter is actually expected. It's getting brighter that's always hopeful, and then it unfortunately always gets fainter. I got We're all dying up. to have another Hayao Kotaki or something like that. I was going to say, there's another name that uh, <laughs> is tough. Yeah, to correct. Is it, how do you pronounce Hayao Yeah. 
I live in Germany, uh, so correct me if I'm wrong. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's, I don't think anybody. I'll win on the German words. I'm from Japan here. I always oh. pronounce it Shakotake. 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 Yeah. I had a beautiful picture. I actually took yeah. a, a photo of that hand guided for about three and a half minutes. Now, about a 105 lens on, on my refractor guided. And I made a poster and I had it hanging in the uh, planetarium uh, lobby for years. And I was mentioning it to somebody and I went out to look at it and was gone. <laughs> somebody had stolen my poster. I felt so honored. It was like, <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, I still haven't made another one, but it, it, my, it was beautiful. It came out really nice. Once you've had your artwork stolen, oh, very photogenic. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm talking about um, the comet, and um, you know, I've been working with the media the last few days, and then I got a an email with Bob to say, "So, Jim, why are you talking about the comet when we can't see it?" And I, what do you mean can't see it? It's always cloudy here in Oregon. Why are you talking about something that <laughs> yeah, right. you cannot see it? I mean, we've been yeah, in so it, yeah. it, but they say, well, why do you talk about it? It's kind of like it fits in the bad astronomers category. And I was like, well, maybe you can't, but maybe somebody in central Oregon or somebody else can see it from their different locations. But I still don't understand why you talk about it. I think, okay, well, knock yourself out. <laughs> Well, that's what planetariums are for. So you can see the kind of stuff when when it's cloudy out or daytime. Doesn't matter. Planetariums always see it. That's why it was invented, huh? Well, and we have to remind people we still have shows even when it's cloudy. <laughs> hey. There was that. What was it? There was a story. I think maybe it was in the last uh, old timers session that somebody was saying that that uh, they got a comment from the audience that like they op they opened the dome and it was so quiet. I didn't even realize they were opening the dome. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. The stars came out. The ultimate illusion. <laughs> Can I share my screen real quick? Uh, Glenn, you want to share? I need to make you a co host, perhaps. Uh, if, okay, let me make you a co host and share. I did the um, laser shows. For a number of years and i had somebody come up to me after a show and they asked how do you do the cameras for the planetarium they thought that the um the stars were projected from a live feed of the sky <laughs> yeah <laughs> and explained to him now we didn't have the lights but it was cool that they thought that we had that technology so this is leonard this is leonard passing yeah. Oh, that's yeah, nice. IPOD today or a couple Very of days nice. ago. On somebody's Facebook page. Yeah. That's Dave Eicher, who's a good buddy of mine, but uh, he's posting like every day stuff yeah. like this. Ooh. That's a great shot. That reminds me of Yakitaki, except it was so close to Earth, it had rare, the tail was incredibly long. Yeah, you, yeah, you can just see it. You can just sit in a chair in your yard and watch it. Yeah. I remember on Hale Bop, oh, uh, yeah. I was walking home from dinner one time downtown, or, you know, under, we, we were standing under a street light, and I could, and I, and I looked up and I said, wait a minute. Yeah. That's, that's Hale Bop. <laughs> and they're all, they're close to each other. Yeah. I feel like this is going to happen like every six months or a year. I can I can deal with that. <laughs> cool, gang. Since I'm on my phone, the battery is starting to die on me, so I'm going to have to bail on you guys. Good to see everybody. Great to see Great you, to Bing. See you, Bing. Take care. Right. See, see you, ya. Bing. Take care. Yeah. yeah.
Bye. Likewise. So I guess I missed all the stories, right? So you've been telling some stories of the uh, the days of old. You missed well, everything. A few. I missed everything. Gosh. <laughs> you've got some stories, George. Come on. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> we heard stories from the bishop in Hawaii. Tell us some stories from the bishop in Florida. Uh, the bishop in Florida. Okay, are I they know. related? Are they related? No, they're not. They're not. Uh, we we had a good story one time. We had um, uh, obviously running planetarium shows during the during the weekend. Um, I got a call from the box office, and they said, um, "There's somebody here that wants to talk to an astronomer." And I said, "Well, you know, no no astronomer on staff today, but uh, you know, I'll come up and talk to her, or whatever." Uh, so I go up, and she says, "Well, um, you know, my husband passed away, and." You know, he was an amateur astronomer and he had, um, you know, he had some things and he wanted to uh, donate to the to the museum. Um, can I just leave this with you? And so she gets this, you know, little wooden box out and, you know, presents it to me. And I said, oh, thank you very much. I'll make sure that it, you know, it goes to George Fleener, who was uh, the astronomer at the time. And um, so George shows up on the weekend and... and um, you know, he goes in the back. I was running shows, and I come out, and I said, oh, hey, by the way, this lady came in and dropped this thing off uh, and wanted to donate it to the planetarium. And he's like, oh, well, well, what is it? And I said, I don't know. I didn't open it. I had to run the show. Um, you know, it's under the under the desk at the uh, – under the ticketing desk. So we go back out there, and we open the box, and it's a, it's a Questar telescope. Yeah. And it's absolutely immaculate. It looks like nobody's ever touched it. And uh, I've never seen Fleener's eyes get so big. He's going mine, mine, mine. Oh, I, we never saw it again. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure it probably won't. <laughs> the cows. Those are the kind that I uh, used to drool over in the magazines when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. I I had no idea how good they were i mean you know he set it up and you know we we did look through it and uh, I, I mean for how small it was i think it was only like three inch but uh, geez unbelievable yeah had a similar story like that george um a few years ago a woman called me in very similar situation her husband passed away and so on i had the telescope i know nothing about and I would like to donate it to the OMSI. And I said, can you describe the telescope? And all she said, oh, it's big. And uh, so um, can you come out and take a look at it? And I said, well, can you take a picture? Oh, I don't know how to take pictures. Can you just come out and take a look at it? And uh, she wanted to sell this telescope. And I said, OK, well, can you describe it? Oh, it's big. So I drove out there, and I went into the garage and talk about big and she she was going to sell it for she said i i put on my um crate list i'm going to sell it for uh, 200 dollars <laughs> i look at this uh, telescope and i think oh my god um you need to add a few more zero to it because it was a 16 16 inch obsession oh. and, it was, and a, a, a literally brand new and obsession is like really like a Roy's voice of uh, telescope Wow. And I uh, said, um, hang on, uh, you want to sell this? And I said, yeah, I do. I want to take the money and get all of my grandkids a telescope. Right? <laughs> and I said, well, let's do this. <laughs> if you donate it, you can do a tax write-off. And so how much do you think it's worth? Uh, well, not more, more than a few hundred dollars. Right? And so she would be able, she donated it, which I have in my possession. And it's a beautiful, beautiful scope. And I use it quite a bit. It's heavy as hell, but mm -hmm. um, she was able to take that and give, give her eight kids, grandkids, a telescope. And, you know, it's one of those, like, that's a great story but the, because every one of them came out to my star party later that summer. And all eight telescopes were out there. <laughs> uh, along with the, the great big gorgeous obsession and uh, the grandkids look at me funny because it's like wait a minute 
you got the obsession. That's grandpa's go. It's gorgeous. And I said, oh, yeah, no. Um, but she gave it to us. And it's like, no, I don't want my scope. I want that telescope. And <laughs> they want to take it home. <laughs> and they'll call the lawyers. What kind did they get? Well, what kind did they get? Yeah. Um, they got, um, what do you call it? Uh, the one from Orion uh, telescope. Not um, Hunter, Czar Hunter, something like that. But they're a small eight inch, eight inch telescope. They were all fairly young. That's decent. Um, so, you know, it's better than none. They they all love it. I show them how to use the telescope and I encourage them to get the Telrad um, so that they can find things easier and what have you. And they still come out and do my star parties every once in a while to show it off. And But they still want to get that telescope back. And I said, no, I'm sorry. This is mine. Um, so it's a wonderful um, collection of scope. They're very happy with it. I think there's another, I think this is a whole category of people who come to a planetarium with uh, questions of, or, or bring an object in or have a question of some sort. There's there's actually one, how many of you have had this happen that somebody comes in that uh, they bought a star or somebody bought them a star and they wanna, <laughs> see, it. They wanna see it in the planetarium, see where it is. Sure. They, said I wanna take it, they don't come in and wanna take it home. <laughs> I had a guy show up with what he with this shaggy dog story, this um, rare meteorite that was from some special fall in Arizona in you know the late eighteen hundreds, and his friend's grandfather got a hold of it and whatnot, and uh, you know he said, "Well, can you?" tell me, you know, if this is authentic and it's like, you know, no, I can't, but, you know, I'll take a little piece and pay for it to be analyzed. And um, it wasn't. <laughs> well, first much thing to his much to, his, yeah, he was really pissed off about it, but um, I, you know, I the was first not, thing you, and the first thing you do, just uh, stick a magnet on it, see if a magnet will stick on it. Yeah. That's a, it's a good first test, but it is a good a, clue. Yeah, it's a good clue. Yeah, yeah. that's a first. Yeah. But no, I I tried to refer people to meteor, meteorite uh, labs, but I don't know where they are now. Actually, these days. Yeah, I, I paid for the ten bucks or whatever to get it analyzed, but um, yeah. Hi, love. <laughs> actually, when it, when I when I confirmed that it wasn't a meteorite. I thought it would be a good thing to have on display uh, just to tell the story. So I was asking him, mm, yeah. you know, will you sell me this piece of slag for 15 bucks or something? And <laughs> he, he wouldn't. Because <laughs> he's, going, oh, he's sure yeah, it isn't yeah, meteorite. You're just ripping him off. Yeah. Yeah, right. Right. A meteor wrong, right? Yeah, exactly. You're wrong. <laughs> Well, I got to take my granddaughter to get her uh, second COVID shot. So I'm going to bow out. But uh, happy holidays, everybody. That's a good reason to bow out. Happy holidays. So, yeah. Have a good holiday. Take care. Good to see you. It seems Later. like uh, I'm going to probably know. take off too. I've got another meeting to get to. Yeah. I think probably we're all reaching the end of our rope. Well, I've got a little oh. more left. <laughs> I've got quite a bit left. <laughs> oh, chair. chair. George, you want to you want to sip? Yeah. Oh, he's got it. <laughs> mm. Mine's got holes in it. You're disappeared, doesn't you? How do you do that? Coming in and out. <laughs> there it is. Magic bottle. But it's but it's empty. So. Oh darn. Oh, are there more where it came from, George? There are, but I'm gonna have to go get them. <laughs> and I've been told that my dinner is ready, so I think I'm gonna wow. have to bow out as well, everyone. Okay, say hello. To you. All right. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for dropping in. Even oh, short sorry, time. I couldn't stay longer. Yeah.
Cheers. Cheers. So that's the host. It's good to see everyone. Good to see you, Tony. Yeah. Bye, we'll Jim. See you guys. Bye, Dario. We'll see you, Glenn. Bye, Carl. Bye. Thank you, Benjamin. Norm Bink. I missed him leaving. Okay. <laughs> Happy Have holidays, everyone. Happy Take care. safe uh, holidays, everyone. That's right. Eat lots, drink lots, don't drink and drive. Right. And get 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 your shots. Okay. Get your shots. Really. I'm boosted. Yeah. It's not and a not, conspiracy. Of, of all kinds, yes. <laughs> hey, Ben. Hey, Ben, stop by again when you can, okay? Okay. <laughs> cool. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, I want to show you guys, uh, maybe just for jog some memories, um, just look familiar. Uh, the melted slide. Oh, oh slide. Yeah, yeah. And then how about this? <laughs> Anybody recognize this? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That's the vent? Yeah, that goes to the projector, the fan. Oh, a fan. And, yeah, yeah. yeah this, <laughs> this was the worst fire I've ever had in the planetarium. Wow. Um, those weren't those weren't sky scan things. Those were self-made, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so these these were my biggest memory. I have a, a Hall of Fame shelf. If every flame, that, a hall of flame, you mean? A hall of flame. Flame. <laughs> <laughs> and uh so um I have a whole shelf that things that caught on fire. Uh, in the early days with the analog and the old bulbs and wiring and what have you. So, um, you were serious about, serious about the smoke test. Yeah. That's normally not supposed to happen so often that you have a collection. <laughs> I would start to suspect there's a pyromaniac on the team. <laughs> I, uh, whenever I hear the fire marshals in the building, I put a Put my door down so it doesn't see it. <laughs> cool. Well, the 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 smell, the burnt smell is gone though. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting enough, though, Alan, that all of these flames that I've had, the one that uh, in my collection, none of them, not a single one of them, set off the smoke alarm. <laughs> not a single mm -hmm. one. Really? It's that it's that the alarm vocally from us. You know. You know. Lots of four letter words come out, um, but um, it never did set up any smoke alarm. And I'm amazed that uh, we survived the way we did. You know, I have a, uh, I'm sorry. I have a, 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 a flame story, but it's not, it's not connected with the planetarium. I, would, I went to a teacher's conference, the National Science Teachers Conference actually one time and was doing a workshop with Edna DeVore uh, on colors, uh, colors and light. And one of the activities was, of course, with uh, diffraction gratings and uh, looking at, you know, looking at light sources. And I, I had set up a light on a, a clip on light on a chair on the side of the room uh, with a tubular light bulb so that you could look at it and see a spectrum. Well, of course, that fell over. And smashed on the on the ground. And uh, if that wasn't exciting enough, it actually lit the carpet on fire. Yeah. For a second. So <laughs> that was that was probably the most exciting workshop that I have ever given. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a little tiny burnt spot on the carpet, and I didn't tell anybody <laughs> after the <laughs> workshop that it was there. <laughs> Older planetarians will remember a lot of theaters had. Uh, these 500 watt halogen floodlights in the cove shining up into the dome as white work lights. Uh, and often a moth or a fly or whatever gets into the room and they land on those things and they proceed to get grilled. So there's always like this shape of in the white light and then comes the smell and the smoke and it was always Gruesome. Sorry, Always smelled like a tuft of hair burning or something. Popping, a popping sound. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, on that note, another one. <laughs> May they rest in peace. Yeah. <coughs> now we all have LEDs. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, not nearly as exciting, are they? Uh, if you want an LED dome, though, they're pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody's thinking about that yet, but it's, oh yeah, the LED dome. They're pretty cool, I have to say. We have a big section in our office, and uh, it's quite cool to play with. We don't have a billionaire financier, so I don't have a full dome LED in the office, but we have a big enough slice of one to to play. With. Well, uh, we actually have conferences we can go to again. Maybe we'll. We'll get some demos of some of that stuff. Yeah, if you go to the AAS meeting in January, they'll it'll be at at uh, Evans and Sutherland, and you can look at theirs. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, Where's, I'm plugging my competitor. <laughs> yeah. Where's that meeting again? Salt Lake. It's in. Oh, of course. Yeah, Very yeah. Convenient for them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I think it might be time to wrap up. What do you think? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think you did great. Thanks. Well, yeah, it's fun. Thank, thank you all for for coming. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah. 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 Alan, I I think you should just figure on doing something like this whenever you can't find somebody to to do a presentation or something. Well, it's I, wonderful to do. It's certainly, yeah, it's an easy backup for okay. if we don't have a formal presentation. Although this time we did have a formal presentation. <laughs> Slide <laughs> show. That's that was, right. that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks to Norm. Yes, <laughs> that was fun. Well, you spent a lot of time traveling around, Norm. That was really yep. nice. You got something put together that was very uh, cohesive there. That was One of my projects, cool. yes. Yeah. I know you were on the road for a while there. I it will be left. again if ever permitted. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess there's lots of really... astronomical things to to visit, so out there waiting. Oh yeah. Well, if you're really Deborah. ever hard up for a presentation and uh, it's not last minute, just ask. Uh, we'll, we'll Non-commercial, I promise. Okay. Okay. Hey, we'll we'll, we'll definitely on. hit you up for that. Yeah. Yeah. We we have some of our some of our customers doing some really, really cool stuff. So I try to collect that stuff when I can and share it with others. It's uh, really interesting. So, well, it's easy to, you know, all we need, all we need to schedule a presentation is a, a title, a description, a time. And we post that, you know, the, it's usually on the last Friday of the month. Um, I, I, can, I can work with that last Friday of the month. Okay. Yeah, 2 p.m. Pacific time. But that's not, we're not locked into that. If there's, you know, if we need to change that, we can for a particular time. It just happens to turn out that way most of the time. We have one uh, user, uh, Anna, in Lund, Sweden, and, and the University of Lund is involved in Gaia. And they've taken uh, the Gaia data and uh, she programmed one sequence where you fly in toward the Milky Way and you see dwarf galaxies orbiting around the, the Milky Way galaxy. And it's really interesting because the orbits aren't closed orbits, they're like corkscrews. Mm. And then you fly into the Milky Way and then there's globular clusters kind of doing the same thing within the Milky Way. They're also orbiting in big swooshes through the Milky Way and they're also not closed orbits, they're more also more like uh, corkscrews. And she's uh, really, it's, it's really, it's, you know, maybe six, seven minutes long, but it's really quite a nice piece. And, and it's real, real data, real actual data coming from Gaia that's uh, provided the, 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 the visualization. Glenn, do you have my email address? Maybe you can, uh, yeah. Or I'll look up. Your, I can. I think I can look up your address, and we can. Uh, I'm here tonight. I must have your email address. Yeah, yeah. You have mine. <laughs> I can find yours. I'm sure. Okay. Smith at skyscan.com. It's quite easy. Okay. I'll jot that down. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks everybody for coming. Yeah. Thanks Thank everyone. You. Nice, nice weekend. Holidays. Nice holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah. Absolutely. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Thank you.